talking to Daryl Ratton of CIA. Daryl, what is it that brands either get wrong or don't understand about how their brands are used, particularly in the context of places like Africa? I think they make assumptions about what Africans are about, what how people consume their brands, how consume their products. Um, and I think for me a classic example might have been maybe a decade ago now, assumptions around black men shaving. Mm. Um, the clients looking at that and going, um, can you do some research for us? We, we don't know why um, we've got a global brand that is world around the rest mm. of the planet. What about this particular continent makes it suffer? Because they've got piles and piles of research that says uh, black men shave. Mm. Um, and I think I was, I think once you're out in the field looking about what's going on, you're doing ethnography, you mm. sort of understand where they went wrong. And I think where they go wrong is their research tells you, yeah, they use a, they use, they shave and, and they use a shaving tool. Yes. But actually when you go into the field, um, no one uses a razor. Yeah. Very, very, very few people use a, 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 a razor. So when you're going out there, they're actually using a hair clipper because it's culturally specific, it's yeah. much more affordable, it's the way things are. And actually, if you're using a bladed tool, it's going to cut your skin. Yeah. It's a physiological difference. So yeah, I, mean, I remember presenting to a client and look, the visual image of this is guys all foamed up and the assumption yeah. is that they're using a shaving cream. And yeah. It's actually using a hair depilatory. Yeah. He said, well, why would you use something like that? It's, you're killing your face. This is because there isn't a solution out there for me. Yeah. And the communications that are coming through, advertising that's coming through is like, uh, new and improved, it's got an extra blade. Yeah. Actually, no, that's an extra cling machine. It's going to be worse and worse and worse for yeah. me. So that's an aisle I just walked straight past. Yeah. Um, so what's yeah. another example of something that, in a sense, is that there's a mismatch between the product and the, and the place? I suppose black hair care is a similar thing. Yeah. Um, I can't, I mean, we do a lot of work for some of those big global companies mm. and all of them describe black hair care in terms of, oh, you, you either got n no hair, yes. <laughs> oily hair, dry yeah. hair or normal hair. If you're a black woman, you don't describe your hair in those terms. Yes. So every single shampoo or hair care product that uses that nomenclature yeah. is a complete mis mismatch to your own experience and your own descriptors. Um, if you're in Brazil, they describe it like bom from it, like blows in the wind. Yeah, yeah. It's it's so light. Yes. Actually, you need hair care products that deliver to that understanding, that taxonomy, yeah. that language, and I think they still haven't got it right, as as with the previous case. And um, why is it that they don't get it right? Is it that these markets are um, too far from home, or is it that there's simply a cultural mismatch? I don't know, a lot of that research is done a decade ago, and I'm using old examples. Yeah. So why don't they get it right? Because now they know. Yes. I just think there's such huge ocean liners of organisations that they can't move tactically. Yes. And maybe they. Or well, locally, they can't move tactically and locally. Yeah, and maybe historically they haven't needed to. Yeah. Screw them. They live in Africa. We'll make some money elsewhere. Yeah. I think now the squeezes it on. I mean, I think just in the last four or five years, and I, I've pretty much travelled everywhere in the continent, mm. and it's because there's a necessity. People are going, actually, that big bottom of the pyramid, mm. if you want to call it like that, it's such a crap term anyway. Yeah, but absolutely. It's, um, but it's... They spend money, don't they? Yeah, and they... Beer, so, all of those things. And they're like more astute and wiser and sharper because they had to be. Yes. Uh, there's, in Kenya, there's a term, Joakali, means under mm. the sun. No one's going to give you a job. You're going to mm. have to do it under the sun. You do yeah. it yourself. You go out and sell. You have to make it on your own. If you, yeah. There's no security network. Yeah. There's no security blanket. If you, if, if you don't get up this morning and feed yourself, you're going to die. Yeah. So I think they look at Greece and what's happening in the EU at the moment to go, it's a joke, you know, you're complaining about yeah. you don't have, 
yeah, the services to sustain a lifestyle which is way beyond your means. We we haven't had that forever. Yeah. And do you know how, how how smart that makes us? Yes. So I think that's one thing that that um, marketers and big business get wrong sitting in outside. Well, I mean, even sitting inside this continent, they don't take it for granted. They actually often marketing is such a sort of insular, closed little world that there's yeah. a little coterie of people who talk to each other. Quite a middle class world in African terms as well. Middle class, we don't have a middle class in Africa. We yeah. have rich and poor like this. Yeah. And they all sit up the top there and actually never get out and see what reality is mm. about. And I think once they do that and, and learn a bit of empathy, mm. learn a bit of understanding and learn a bit of humility, they recognize what unbelievably good marketers Africans mm. are. Yeah. And I'm using that in a useless generic sense. But I mean, think of, think of clothing sort of retail chains that have gone up into Nigeria now. Yes. I mean, there's a sort of this sort of South African neo-colonial sort yeah. of expansion into Africa, or an attempt anyway. And some of our retail brands have gone up into those environments. Mm. Like I mean, ShopRite. ShopRite's, I mean, ShopRite's done for me is an amazing mm. thing. It's, it's fundamentally shifted the way um, consumers are sort of a sh shitty word because people also produce, mm. but it's the way they engage with those products and it's amazing in, in Suikeji in Lagos mm. that I mean ShopRite the sort of the uh, is a key tenant in the mall it's mm. created a new mall culture like yeah. in the last few years but if you watch people shopping there like they walk up and down those aisles with a basket and come out with bugger all yeah why it's the experience of shopping there that's actually fascinating it, it's yeah that's going to, and it's going to take a little while before yeah. actually but if you look at the, the rows of the products on the shelf, it's mm. like, what is a freaking olive? What yeah. do you do with an olive? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it's not part of... So I think there's the... I think it's amazing... As retailers have an amazing capacity to start shifting mm. behavior, but it's going to be long durée. It's not going to happen now. Yeah. And I think, like, pep stores, interestingly, when I was up there a little while ago, not so long ago, pep stores is a, a mm. sort of here uh, in this country anyway um, sort of a very uh, it was perceived to be quite pejorative historically but an affordable clothing mm. retail chain when they move up into yeah into echo market mm. in Lagos they're the one they're, they're up market a, they're a formal like it's, I, I can't describe to you the yeah. markets there you can buy absolutely freaking anything yeah and for an amazingly good price. Yeah. We also have um, notions in, in in our world of um, you have an authentic product and you have a fake product. Mm. It don't work like that in Nigeria. Mm. You have an authentic, authentic, authentic product mm. coming from a brand shop, and then they have a fake, authentic product. Yeah. So it's it's not. And they give you the choice at two different prices. Why? Because they understand consumers there. Yeah. Way better than we do. Yeah. Um, mm. Because they understand that there's a guy on a bendy skin motorbike. It's, yeah. He can't afford the real thing, but he wants them. Yeah. So there, there's a version of it for him. Yeah. Now yeah. you've got a retail chain that's coming up here and saying, oh, this is authentic product. Yeah. But priced like that high. Yeah. And they have to be because the the sort of retail space they're trying to develop there is, yeah. and, and retail shopping experience they're trying to develop there is, requires it. But I think if you ask, like, what do these companies get wrong, I don't think they understand and appreciate and are humbled enough by yeah. the degree of unbelievable entrepreneurship mm. that it, that's required to live in this environment. Daryl, thanks for talking to me today. Okay.